This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to look at a reusable tab control created using HTML5 and a custom jQuery plugin. So if you look at the chapter 10 folder within working files, you'll find a subfolder named tab control. And if you open index.html in your browser, you'll see how this works. So this is just a standard tab control. Any tab brings up different content. And you'll find this sort of thing used a lot within web pages. You'll also note with this particular implementation that the height of this box stays consistent. So even though tabs 1 and 2 have very little content, they remain at the same height as tab 3. So in other words, the height of the control stays constant and is sized according to the highest box. So let's take a look at the HTML first. At the top of this page, we have an unordered list containing links to sections below. So this link here actually links through to this section. Now we can see this working without JavaScript even being enabled. Let's disable JavaScript and refresh the page. Now if our page is made slightly smaller and we click on tab 3, you'll see it goes to that content. This is known as progressive enhancement. It means that the page works even if JavaScript is disabled. Let's switch JavaScript back on. By the way, this is the web developer toolbar here, which is a plugin for Firefox, and it's got various useful functions. So let's refresh the page again, get back where we were. So back in our code, you'll find that the tabs themselves and the sections that they link to are styled using CSS3 properties within styles.css. And finally, of course, we have our plugin code. And this is contained within jQuery.tabs.js. Now you can call the tabs method on any set of tabs, but if you look at the bottom of this code, you'll see that it's automatically applied to any unordered list with a class of tab set. So let's take a closer look at how it works. Below all the internal functions, we have an each method, which goes through all the lists that we've passed to this particular method. Now this line just loads each list element as its own jQuery object. And we also append a data attribute named height, which keeps track of the maximum height, which should be applied to all tab sections. This line here looks at the URL. That's the address in the top of your web browser and it discovers whether any of the sections have been linked to at the start. We now use jQuery to locate all the links within our list, and we use another each to go through all of them in turn. The first line finds where the link is actually going, and the next line finds the section that it's linking to. It then checks the height of that section, and if it's higher, than any previously checked section, it will store it within our height data attribute. It then hides the section completely, so the content disappears. And finally, it determines whether this tab should be opened first, either because it's the first tab within our control, or if it's been linked to in the URL. And next, we activate the currently active tab. Now let's have a look at the active tab function to see how it works. First, it's expecting a single link element to be passed. It loads that as a jQuery object and finds the closest parent unordered list. It then looks if there are any current links which are active at this time. When we first run this, none of the links are active and so this won't have been defined. It then determines whether the link we've clicked is the same or different to the one that's currently highlighted. Of course, we haven't got one that's currently highlighted at this moment, but if we did, it would check 
that we hadn't just clicked the same link again. So on the currently active link, it removes a class of active from the old tab. It then finds the section that tab's linking to. It checks whether the height has changed and hides that section because this is the old tab, remember. Then for the new tab that we've just clicked, we apply an active class. This effectively changes the style and we display its content section. And if necessary, we also change the content's height. And finally, we store the active node within the list's data attribute. So when this function is run again, it knows that there's a currently active tab which it needs to disable. So now we've reached the end of this function. If we go back to where it's initialized, we'll see that we've also added a click handler to all the links within our tab set. And this runs a function named click tab. Here it is. So this is a very short function. All it does is determine which link has been clicked by looking at the target. And then it passes that to the activate tab function that we described just a moment ago. Finally, it returns false to ensure the browser doesn't perform any default action and try to jump to that location on the page. Let's just run it again and we'll see it works well. Now what's great about this plugin is that we can use it anywhere. As long as we have suitable HTML, the plugin code will activate itself and create a tab control. I recommend you go through the code to learn some more about it and you're welcome to use it in any of your own projects.